All right, so everything we've done so far with our sketch and then cleaning it up and bringing it in to Photoshop and thickening it and eventually getting to where we have this transparent, you know, black pixels only floating on empty space. All of this is stuff we've learned already. It's all raster techniques in Photoshop. And you probably knew how to do a lot of this stuff in terms of drawing and making an image before taking digital art, right? So what we've done with all our compositing projects, compositing projects is just learn how to manipulate these variables a little bit better and the layers a little bit smarter. The next skills we learn are in a program called Illustrator. And these are skills that not that many people have. And so it's a very useful set of professional skills for making vector images. So what we're going to do is save this as a PNG so that that transparency is preserved. So I have all my, my background layers turned off. Actually, I should have this one turned off too because there's debris in there I didn't want. You see that? And I, I haven't cleaned it up a, a huge amount, but I cleaned it up enough for my purposes. And now I say file, save as a PNG to the desktop, Command-D. That way I can see it. And if I want to work with my sketch, I can. I can save this as a Photoshop file with all my layers, just in assignment six. OK, so now I'm going to leave Photoshop. And now we're going to finish off our, our black logo entirely in Illustrator. So what I do is I'm going to take this PNG, which if I opened it up in preview, just double click it, is floating on a gray background. Because remember, it's transparent. And I'm going to open it with Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator. When you open a raster file, a pixel-based file in Illustrator, it's like bringing a smart object into Photoshop. It will ask you to place it first. Right? But the difference is, it doesn't matter how many pixels are in your image. Illustrator doesn't operate with pixels. So what, what I want you to think of when you see Illustrator is it's a big sheet of paper, and you're going to be cutting shapes out. And it doesn't matter if that, that piece of paper is the size of a postage stamp or the size of a billboard. You want your shapes to be clean, and those cuts are not going to be derived by little pixels. So because my image was a scan, it's a pretty large resolution. So to place it, I want to click on it. And then I want to hold down Shift and Option, just like Photoshop, to transform it and shrink it onto what is called the artboard. So this is the default artboard in Illustrator. It is basically an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. Because if you do print from Illustrator, it has to map it onto a page somehow. But just because I shrunk it to fit onto the white background doesn't mean that it's not there. Okay? This is still a raster file. How do I know? Because I have the box around it, and I don't see any anchor points. Right? And if I click on it, you're going to see this option at the top of the screen. And this is the first thing you can do with a raster file in Illustrator. You can ask the computer to try to convert it into a vector for you. And that's called image tracing, or sometimes called live tracing. So I don't want to just click image trace. I want to use the drop down menu and tell it what I want this vector to be. I want this vector to be a black cutout. I don't want it to be a black and white logo, because I don't want white to be in it. Does that make sense, that distinction? So I'm going to go right to silhouette. I want this to be like a cutout of black paper. And any white that's in it is going to be just the background color coming through. So I, I use the drop down next to image trace, and I go to silhouettes, and I click on that. Now it's going to do something for me, but this is just previewing it. And it made some things look smoother made a lot of things look smoother, but some of them look clumpier and, and less nice because of it. So let me play with these settings. And so on these top image tracing options, I want you to click on this little control panel, the image trace panel, and this will come up. 
And then I want you to go to advanced, right? So the first threshold you have, this is just like using the magic wand in Photoshop, is how sensitive do you want it to be? Basically, if there is a pixel there, how dark does it need to be to be turned into a black vector path? So right now it's pretty sensitive. So let me dial that back and say less. And you'll see more and more open space will be opened up. And this is still just a preview. So if you can get away with less and less, then you're going to have more open space to work with. And I don't want mine to be too overpoweringly thick, but I also don't want it too thin so that when it's the size of a postage stamp, you can't see what's there. But that looks pretty good to me. Next we have is the paths. How many paths do you want? How many individual shapes? And if I say I want very low, then it's going to get rid of a lot of that randomness in my design. So look, that's really low. Notice how it really smooths things out. So that's a good thing for this design, but it's going to be different for each one. If I say I want a lot of paths, it's going to pick up a lot of subtlety, right? That because this is just a pencil sketch, I don't want. So I want it to really reduce my paths. Then corners. How much do I want it to take sharp turns at the edge of, of shapes? Like when you take scissors and you have to pivot the scissors and cut the other way. This logo, I have quite a few of those that I don't want to lose. So I think 50% is about right. I might even try more corners. And that kind of sharpens up some of those transitions. But what if my logo is really smooth and curvy? I can do a lot less and then it will soften all of those curves. So again, you kind of decide what you want, what gets you closest. Okay, next, noise. So little pieces like this, even though I mostly have gotten rid of the noise by lessening my paths, little free floating things, little debris around your logo that are a certain size. The noise says that no vector shape will be made unless it's 98 pixels or larger, right? And if I take the noise way down, then it will allow even more debris. So I'm going to say I don't want much noise at all. That's about as good as I can get with these tools. Is this a great logo? Not yet, right? In fact, it's not even a vector yet. This is just a preview of the vector that the computer can create. But now if I zoom in, look. This curve, just like that video I showed you, it has no pixels. And that is a big, big improvement in my mind from the sketch I brought in. Let's look at that sketch. If I zoom in on this, I see all the pixels. Let's get to that exact same curve, you know, on the outside of this leaf. So that versus from a distance, they look kind of similar, but versus this curve, right? That's a cutout, really clean. So sometimes live tracing can get you off to a really good start, especially if you are pretty fond of your sketch. But I'll show you a different technique if live tracing doesn't work for you. In order to, to um, cement the live trace, to say, yes, you want it to make it into a vector, you click expand at the top of it, okay? But before you do that, I want you to notice something. Under advanced and options, because you can trace it any way you like and get back to these, right? Under options, you'll see that it has a box. This is very important. That says ignore white. And the reason we chose silhouette instead of black and white logo is because that box is already checked. Otherwise, they're the same. So if we ignore the white, it means that this is a free floating logo. So I put it over there and the gray shows through. But if we didn't ignore the white, it would make two sets of vector shapes. It would make the black paper cutouts and it would make white paper cutouts behind it. And we don't want the white. All right, so let me hit expand and you're gonna see what a vector looks like. Make sure, the box is checked. Make sure that the ignore white is checked. Yep, we can always add white coloring in later, but we don't want the computer to do it for us. So if I hit expand, watch what's happen what happens. It's a magical, magical 
moment of birth. Oh, so now it looks like it has the chicken pox, right? The, the box around it has shrunken from the size of the, the PNG I brought in just to the very edges of the black shapes. And those little chicken pox are what are called anchor points. So even though the design is perfectly clean and smooth, at least when I zoom in, this, this looks lovely, right? And it shows how much you can do with just using Photoshop to clean up a sketch. Like all of that looks really nice, but if I want to modify it, like there's a bump there I don't want, I can click on it and I can modify the anchor point. And so we're going to learn how to do that in a little bit. So cool. And you do that with these Bezier curves. Or we could just delete the anchor point if we don't think we need it. Right? So if you think of this as just a black cutout, then it's a lot easier to understand how you can manipulate it. And you're just kind of massaging the cutout into the curves you want. Okay, so are there layers in Illustrator? Yes, there are. Click on the side and you can see layers. The problem is they're only an organiz organizational tool. So because I live traced, it already created a, a layer group for me. And that layer group is filled with all the paths that are in this. So let's look at those paths one, one by one. Some logos have just hundreds and hundreds of paths. So one path is this one on the bottom. That is all one cutout shape. Why is that all one path? Because like a stencil, all of this is connected. Does that make sense? It's all one piece of paper. For anything that's disconnected from this, like this, that has to be a separate path. Like this, like this, like this, all these little free floating shapes, each will have its own path. And some of them I, I know I don't want, so I can just delete certain paths just by clicking on it and hitting delete or moving it to the trash. Now that is one way you can select individual paths is by clicking next to them and you'll see the little blue anchors show up. Now layers organize by giving a different color to each, each uh, layer you create. So next I'm, gonna, I'm going to lock this layer, which is something I do a lot in Illustrator because it's a really picky program. And I'm going to turn it off with the eyeball. And now I'm going to bring in my sketch again and show you the other way you can do it. But dragging and dropping doesn't work. So I, I'm going to say file. I need import. I'll do it this way. I'm going to take my, my PNG and I'm going to open it in Illustrator again. Open with Illustrator. It's going to come in as a new Illustrator file. I hope it's going on. Let me do this quickly. I'm going to save this as a test file to the desktop. It's just because it's the same name. And now that that's the test file, I should be able to open up a new one with Illustrator here. Okay, so here it comes in. And instead of live tracing it this time, I'm just going to copy it. Okay, so I'm just going to hit Command C or Edit Copy. Then I'm going to go back to my original. I'm going to create a new layer, just like you do in Photoshop. And I'm going going to say edit paste in place. Okay. I'm going showing you the two different ways you can use your raster image okay. in Illustrator. The first was to live trace it. This is to use it as a guiding sketch. So 